Hey everybody, Martin McGovern from Career Therapy here. I wanted to make this video really quick to let some of you job seekers in on the back end of LinkedIn. What does the hiring side look like on LinkedIn? I think it might be pretty insightful for you uh, to just kind of peek behind the curtain because you're sending so many applications into this black hole of, of the job boards. What actually happens when they show up on the other side? So I want to talk about what that looks like. A while back, I posted a job listing on LinkedIn in their job board, and uh, I kept it really simple. I just said a couple of things of what we were looking for and put it out and started getting applications. Now, it becomes a bit of an overwhelming nightmare <laughs> for the hiring person as soon as you hit post on that thing. And, the, and, and, and once, once you hit post, you start getting flooded. You start getting an email for every single application that comes through. You start getting notifications about upgrading and paying for the premium and doing all these different things and, and uh, whether or not you should promote your listing or, or keep it up longer. It just starts to get stressful immediately. And so I want job seekers to understand that. I want job seekers to understand what it's like on the other side for the hiring person because it, it starts to get pretty overwhelming. Not saying it's not overwhelming on your end too, not giving uh, hiring people a free pass, just letting you in on what it looks like on our end. Now, once those applications start coming through, they get filtered through LinkedIn's sort of ATS system, applicant tracking system, and it's okay. It's not great. It, it tries to tell you who's a good fit and who's not a good fit. Sometimes it's accurate, most of the people just get lumped into the maybe category. So what does that mean? That means that the person who uh, put up the posting has to now go through every single posting and take a look at it, uh, which actually LinkedIn does not make very easy for them to do. Uh, it kind of has this left-hand column of everyone's names and, and a bit of information from their LinkedIn profile. And then on the right-hand side, it has their application, their rating, uh, whether or not you can message them, and then you can open their profile. It also has a clip from their LinkedIn and it shows their resume down at the bottom. Now, let's start with the resume. What do I see as the hiring person when the resume comes through on my end? Well, if it's a Word doc, I see a little box with a little blue square that says doc and it says your resume's title. So I can't even view it within the platform. I have to download it to see it. So you click on it, you download it, and I open it up. Problem is, when it opens up, I'm on a Mac. You saved it in a Word doc. If I don't have this, the right software, it opens up in pages and then tries to change all the fonts. So immediately I get a bunch of pop-ups saying, these fonts are incorrect and this is all incorrect. Would you want to match fonts and do all these things? No, I don't. So I try and get rid of all that, get rid of it, look at your resume and it's all formatted odd. It's not how you sent it to me because it's a Word doc. Now, Word docs are better for robots to read. They're better for the ATS, but they're not great for people because it gets all messed up. If you have images in there, if you have icons in there, everything just gets all screwed up. So what do you do? Do you submit a PDF? Well, I guess you can. And, so, and the PDFs honestly do look nicer. They show up actually in the uh, ATS system on LinkedIn and they look pretty good. They, uh, you know, it's just a, it looks like an image of your, of your resume. Problem is I can't click anything and it only shows me half of it. So I still have to download the resume. I can't just interact directly from LinkedIn's hiring system, which means if I'm clicking around trying to see different people's stuff and open up profiles and do all sorts of things, if I click away and I come back, I better have a pretty organized process together, which secret most people don't and most hiring people are just kind of winging it all you end up sitting there going oh, i have to re-download this resume and re-download this resume because they're not all titled very well so even in my downloads folder it's just a bunch of gibberish a lot of the time so anyway i'm looking at these resumes trying to understand a little bit about your background i'm trying to see some things and the main thing I want to see, especially if it's like a design position or a developer position, is I want to see your portfolio. So how do I see it? Well, I have to click on the link. Again, if it's a Word doc, I click on it and it's all messed up because it's in pages and whatever, so I have to copy and paste it. If it's in a PDF, I try to highlight it. It's a bit of a mess. So what I really would like to do 
because downloading the resume is such a pain in the butt, and don't get me wrong, I know the resumes are a pain in the butt to create as well. I'm not saying uh, any of this is really even on you. I'm just saying the easiest thing for me to do as the hiring manager is to go to your LinkedIn profile and then click through to your portfolio. The problem is I am shocked by how many UI, UX, design, developer uh, people do not have a link to their portfolio from their LinkedIn page. It is mind-blowing to me. I go to your LinkedIn page and all I see is an empty picture or an empty profile or a bunch of information and I go to hit contact because that's where you can save it and it just has your LinkedIn page. It doesn't have anything that tells me how to find out more for you. Some people do have it and kudos to you. Uh, another way you could showcase it on your LinkedIn profile is down in the featured section. You could put it there or in the about section, you could put it there or you could create your own freelancer brand and put it there. Just make sure I can find your portfolio somehow easily that you point me in the direction. It's a funnel people. We got to funnel these hiring people to where we want them to go. And then if I get to your website, I hope that it showcases what you're actually applying for. If you're applying for marketing roles, it better be a marketing website. If you're applying for UX roles, it should be a UX focused website. If I'm a career coach and I'm applying for career coach roles, it should be a career coach and website or something like it, right? So wanted to give you a little bit of that back end. Now, again, it is a messy system on the back end. I mean, they try their best to keep it organized. It, it, it looks okay. It looks very plain, very, very basic. And uh, if you really want to see it, hey, you can post your own job and then take it down immediately and you can see what the whole back end system looks like. Little tip if you want it. And uh, one thing I will say is, you know, you're trying to go through all this stuff. I had a job posting up just for a day. And I had 48 applicants in one day. And I'm a nobody, right? So you can only imagine how difficult this would be for a real hiring manager at a real company who's trying to sort through the hundreds and hundreds of applications on, on jobs that have been promoted and paid to be put in front of you. Maybe even a thousand people have applied to it. This system is not meant for me to be able to sort and see everyone. If I had to do that whole process that I just talked to you about of clicking into the thing, looking at the thing, downloading the pages, keeping it in my, in my downloads folder, trying to get to your profile, trying to see your portfolio. If I had to do that for 100 plus people, 300 plus people, 500 plus people, whew, there's no way. There's just no way. And then there are those other things that you can do to be more seen. You can message the person, you can connect with the person. And a bunch of people did that as well, and I give them kudos for it. But my inbox is flooded, and everything is just overwhelming. Remember, LinkedIn is also emailing me a bunch of times while this is all happening. So I'm going to have to take some time to get back to those people. So again, if you are applying for jobs in the job search process, a couple things that you can do. Make sure it's easy for them to find your personal website and portfolio. Very important. Number two, um, upload a PDF or a Word doc. I guess you could do either, but typically PDF looks the best, at least on LinkedIn. Different advice for different platforms. Number three, when you apply for this role, make sure that everything in your resume and on your website fits what you're applying to. So that's why you got to keep a good focus. If you want to be a writer, apply to writing jobs. If you want to be a marketer, apply to marketing jobs. If you want to be a UXer, apply to UX jobs and so on. Adjust your online presence to fit what you're applying to rather than applying to things that don't match what you have in your profile. And last but not least, fill out your full profile. Have a photo, have a cover picture, or whatever. Actually have information for the hiring person to see. And you put all that together and we're gonna have a much easier experience. Not that it's perfect, it's gonna be a pain on your side, it's gonna be a pain on the hiring side, and we're all gonna to have to deal with it. But that's also just the state of careers these days. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for any of you job seekers out there as I get this nice light line across my face. 
And uh, if you want more videos like this, let me know what topics you would like me to cover in future videos. I'll keep putting these 10 minute job search shorts together for you. Thanks for watching and have a good I'm too day. Old for this. Been around this broken down for way too long.